Hi, my name is Troy Johnson, and this video is designed to help you set up your website. We're going to find a web host. That's the company that uh, uh, maintains the computer that your website will live on, and we're going to select and register a domain name. This, um, this video is designed for students who are taking the Principles of Web Design course. However, anyone who is interested in uh, launching their own website can benefit from this video. The first thing that we want to do is talk about uh, web hosting companies. Uh, there are a wide variety of them uh, and they offer uh, actually a dizzying array of, of uh, pricing and options and is often very difficult to compare one to another. Um, but you want to try to go with someone that's uh, well established. Uh, Network Solutions has been around almost as long as the web has been around, and they're a solid company. I use them. I also use a, a GoDaddy. Um, their benefit is that their strength is that is their customer service. You can always get someone on the phone if you have questions. Um, just on the downside, you got to make sure that um, you they often try to upsell you on services that you don't really need. Uh, but again, they're another solid company. On the low end, they offer uh, web hosting for $4 a month, essentially, um, which apparently is a savings of, of $42 uh, uh, right now. Um, we're going to go back and use uh, 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 a cheaper, uh, less expensive option, and you can find that if you go back to our students' website and menu and select useful resources. Underneath it, you will find Domains for Authors. Now, Domains for Authors is actually the web host that hosts our courses website. We're going to go here and select uh, View Premium Offers. And uh, you'll see that their, their options uh, range from 80, almost $84 a year to uh, 99 cents or just under 12 bucks a year. Um, we're going to go with the $12 uh, a year option or the 99 cents per month. Uh, you'll see that they offer uh, 250 gig, which is uh, a ton of space for a website. And let's click buy now. So immediately we're prompted to uh, register a new domain. And let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're going to select .com from the drop down on the right, and um, I'm going to select the domain name, which I believe is available. Um, let's say my second web. Now let's go to my third website. All right, so my third website .com, and we'll click. We will click continue. Okay, so we see that my third website. Dot com is available with the year um, one year at twelve ninety nine so we'll continue all right so the domain name uh, for twelve ninety nine uh, the web hosting at seventeen ninety nine um, that is more than what it was said originally um, all right, let's continue. Nonetheless, uh, apparently they need to update their uh, price list. So we're going to plug in my name. Of course, Google remembers everything. Um, let's give them a password. I guess they don't like that. Oh, first password here. All right, it's not a great password, but it's good enough, apparently. So we'll update this. Oh, promo code. Let's go look for a promo code. Uh, this company is called iFastNet. iFastNet promo code. February 2016. Get coupon. Super SSD. Uh, web hosting promo code let's pop that in there validate okay so we, we did get the 20% off that's good all right um, 
I have read. No one reads this stuff I'd imagine, but let's go check out. Yeah, let's check out. All right. PayPal. Okay, after you've completed the payment process, you'll receive an email confirming uh, your domain name registration and your web hosting account. You'll be provided with an email that shows all of your login credentials, your password, your your website name that you registered. Um, it's a good idea to retain this information because you'll you'll need to reference it in the future. Um, you can also change your password to something that makes a little more sense. But as you can see here, our domain name is mythirdwebsite.com. If we just simply copy this domain name address and paste it into our browser, and we go to the site, we'll see that there's really nothing there. Now we have to create our own, uh, a web page. We have to create a page that has some content on it so that when we browse to our new website, uh, we'll have some content there that we can actually read. All right, so let's get started with that. All right, let's go back to that email where we had our login credentials, and you'll see that there is something called the control panel. All right, so simply click the link for the control panel, and that will prompt you to log in. Again, the username and password that have been assigned to you are on that original email. So again, you can just copy and paste it here. Um, mine is pre-populated. So you just click to log in. Once you've logged in, you'll see a wide variety of tools that you can use. And, and right now, we're just concerned with File Manager. So we're going to go into File Manager. And we're going to browse. We're going to select the directory where our web files belong. Open up that folder. You'll see that there's no files in this directory and one folder, CGI bin. If we go back to our website, we'll actually see that um, that folder and no files. So we're going to create our first web page and we're going to name it index.html. Index.html is the default name of a web of, of of a folder in a website. So we're going to go up to the uh, direct the uh, up to the menu where it says file. We're going to click the plus sign plus file, and we're going to create a new file name. Index.html. And again, index.html is the name of the file that the web server will display once you go to your uh, your domain by default. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So let's create this new file. And we're going to go ahead and right click, then go into code edit. Okay, so now we're in the code edit mode. Um, let's go back to our classes uh, website. And we have a, there is a slide on starting a new web page. So if we click that link, we're going to take the code, the basic code for a blank web page. We're going to copy it and paste it into the file index.html. All right, so right now we're going to type in some HTML. And actually, let's make that text a little bit bigger by applying an H2 tag. And let's save this. And let's go back to our website. Refresh this page. And we see that we have a new HTML document. And uh, that concludes our video.